Hello friends, welcome to today's discussion. Today we are going to talk about the deep neural network. And first thing is to discuss about the feed forward network. That means you have created a new neural network like this. And you want to, uh, there are like, if you talk about neural network, that means you are creating some nodes, right? So there will be like input nodes, there could be the hidden nodes and there could be the output nodes. Okay, so there are three kinds of nodes and there are kind of like of n number of hidden layers in between the input and output. Okay, so this is the hidden layers. So we need to calculate what will be our actual output based on the input and the weight for each node. We will calculate each node and there are like some uh, few things you need to consider when you calculate the uh, actual output of the neural network. And the last thing you need to do is like you need to calculate the loss value or the overall error, like how much you are deviating from your target. So here you have target as output zero for one output and output one for another output. So you need to calculate how much you have deviated in your actual output. So that is calculated by some loss function. So we have uh, taken as uh, mean squared error as the loss function here. So you can take the log loss function as well. So let's start. Um, so I have given a table of content here. So there are certain steps. There are certain steps to calculate the uh, actual output. And there are certain steps to calculate the output for each node. I, I will uh, discuss in detail uh, how to calculate the input and output based on the activation function for each node. And uh, that is totally dependent on the weight and bias and input for that node. So uh, overall, I would say that there are two, two three steps. For in first steps, we need to calculate all the node for first hidden layer and the second hidden layer. Second, we need to calculate the output layer uh, input and output. And third, we need to calculate the overall loss or the error. Let's start today's discussion. Please watch till the end because it will be very uh, practical way to do it. Uh, you can see some mathematical calculation there, but I want to do it in Python notebook so that you can get any value, but you will still be able to um, calculate your actual output based on this neural uh, deep feed forward network. So let's start. So first thing you need to do is what all parameters or values you need to consider. So there will be input values, there would be biases for each node or each layer you can say, there will be weights for each node, there will be learning rate, like how much, so you have a gradient descent, right? So based on this gradient descent, you, you will decide that how much you are deviating from your actual, like what the expected value the target output value. So um, based on the learning rate, you, you can slowly or fast the, achieve that target um, output value. So next thing is the activation function. There are n number of activation function, but in this case, I just discussed about the hyperbolic tan, uh, re uh, rectified linear unit, and last thing is the softmax. So there are some other um, uh, the, uh, activation function or the uh, transition function. You, you, you may see there will be a sigmoid function. There will be the linear function. There could be any, any function you can have for each node, but they can be same for all the layer and they could be different for the all layers. Okay, but we need to calculate it node by node. Keep it in mind and the target output value because if you don't get the target output value how can you check that you, uh, what is the 
your error because you are comparing with with respect to your target only and then the mean squared error loss function is calculated as like uh, target minus actual and you can get it squared for each value of the output each node of the output and then uh, the take the mean of it so here i have the two nodes then like divided by two so let's proceed to calculate this uh, for each node so you have a neural network like this you have like these values for the input there are two nodes of the input so x1 and x2 and there are like two hidden layer hidden layer one and hidden layer two and there could be like uh, two node for each hidden layer and hidden layer one and two for the hidden layer uh, two as well and there will be two output nodes and there are like 12 weights going towards each node okay so for if i talk about this node so i would say that w1 and w3 is its out input x1 and x2 will be input with the weight w1 and w1 and w3 and then this will be the input for this hidden layer and uh, how it is calculated is just like you know that matrix multiplication and then added with the bias value and then for the output we need to have this transition function output for this node so if i draw it correctly so if i just draw it bigger so this will be your one node okay uh, please pardon me if you cannot uh, understand my handwriting and there will be two uh, input x1 and x2 and with weight one and weight three then what will be your input for this node so for h1 input will be w1 x1 plus w2 w3 x2 and then plus the bias b1 so this will be the input for this hidden layer what will be the output for this hidden layer so that will be sigma of this h1 that means you this sigma is that transition function if it is relu then you should have like uh, if it is relu then the function will be max between 0 and h1 like this you are calculating the output for this node so uh, how we are calculating we are starting from the input because it is a feed forward okay try to understand the term so in feed forward we'll start from the input and we will calculate for the each node so what is the uh, nearest node to the input so the hidden layer first hidden layer node so we will calculate the h11 and h12 and then next iteration or the next step we'll calculate for the h21 and h22 and in the third uh, step we'll calculate for the y1 and y2 so how you are going to calculate first thing is we need to calculate the uh, as i as i described uh, we need to calculate that how you are calculating the input for each node so this is like a dot product for the weight and the input array because these are the one dimensional array you can like um, have it like that and one part i missed there that will come into the later that is the learning rate is equal to one you can have 0 0.1 you can have 0 0.5 you can have 0 0.005 how fast you want to go for that uh, like target output so that will be your learning rate okay and that will be not considered for the feed forward so learning rate is actually taken care for the backward calculation like what will be in the next iteration so what will be the weight values the updated weight values so this is one calculation the entire calculation of the actual output will be the one epoch in the next iteration in the next epoch this learning rate will decide what will be the 
um, updated value of these all weights because input is not going to change and target output is not going to change. What will change is the uh, weight values and the activation functions also will not change. So this is how you are calculating the input for each node. So this calculation will be same for all nodes. So this is a dot product between all these one dimensional array. So this is the weight array, like you have weight one, weight two, and weight three. And there will be another array for the input, like x1 and x2. Sorry, it's scattered. But now, what will be the activation function? So if it is ReLU, then the activation function will be like, you are taking the maximum between zero and input value. What would be the sigma? If it is sigma, what would be the activation function? So it will be one by one plus ex uh, exponential of minus input value. So I just made a mistake here, there, I think I taken, okay, this is, it is sigma only. So I just made mix uh, here, okay? So pardon me, it is not soft max, so it is sigmoid. Okay. All right, let's proceed. So now this is how your uh, input uh, for each node is calculated. And this is how all these activation functions are calculated. And if it is hyperbolic time, you know, one plus, uh, e to the power x, minus e to the power minus x by uh, e to the power x plus e to the power minus x that will be the hyperbolic tan activation function output so that i just uh, taking that numpy uh, how you can use the numpy to calculate this the exponential values and then you can create this formula okay and you can return the output like this so for each activation function i just create one one function like this and then i will calculate using these four function one is the input function and these are the activation function so uh, what would be the, the calculation for this hidden node the uh, input is same like w1 into x1 w3 plus w3 into x2 plus b1 so i have added the bias as well here so then i just taken all the weights here and all the biases here all the input here all the target output here and what is the learning rate here okay uh, because i will not stop my discussion in the feed forward network only in the next video i will take care of the back propagation as well so this is the wave for h11 this is the uh, input for h11 and this is the bias for h11 and then h11 input is calculated i have printed it you can see the value uh, just to consume the time uh, precisely and this is the output because for the uh, hidden layer one what is the transition function your transition function is hyperbolic tan so that is used here as a function so same thing we just calculated for the um, second node of the hidden layer one as well okay so i just have this hyperbolic tan function and i just use it for the next step what i have done i just calculated for the weight what will be the weight for the next iteration next layer a hidden node a hidden node h21 h21 is this one right so for h21 what will be the um, weights h11 will be the output of h11 will be the input for this node right and uh, what h12's output as well okay so output of h11 and output of h12 with the weight w5 and w7 will be for h21 and with the weight w6 and w8 for the h22 let's see what we have done so for this for the second layer 
we just calculated in that way okay so this is the weights w5 and w7 for h21 and w6 and w8 for h22 and h11 output and h12 output will be the input x for this h21 and bias will be b2 okay and that the calculation is same but the activation function is different the second case activation function is a uh, rectified linear unit okay so it is the maximum between zero and that value okay if it is negative then we will take at zero okay uh, for the next layer what will be the activation function the activation function will be sigmoid the calculation is same we just taken the h21 output and h22 output as the input and w9 w11 for the uh, output one and bias will be zero i have not declared any bias there so the calculation will be input for the same for all nodes maybe it's hidden nodes maybe it's output node but it will be same but for the um, output i just taken the sigmoid as my activation function and this will be the value for the second output this is the same calculation but only the weights are different okay and then this will be the values it has calculated now what will be the overall loss or error function okay so for the overall loss function what you need to do this will be your actual output right 0.8 and 0.63 approximately okay and then you just calculated using these two values so how i have given this so let me clear okay and then you see that y actually is y1 output and y2 output and y target is y1 y2 that i have declared already above so then i i just uh, calculated the overall error by the loss function i just declared this loss function as well so where i have uh, calculated this loss function this is my loss function again i have used the numpy to get the value first i subtract from actual to target um, so for all values of it it will just subtract one value from other and then i just take the square of it and then sum of it and divide it by 2 because i have two output and this is my overall error 0.389 okay so is it less is it a uh, very big number you need to decide okay because someone take 0.001 as a threshold value for the loss function that will be very good value and uh, if it is somebody will take like 0.1 is also a very good value but this is how the loss is calculated for one epoch thank you so much for this video in the next video we will um, discuss about the back propagation how these weights are updated please stay tuned